Hey everybody, welcome back. Uh, it's been a little bit. I, um, I've been taking a little break doing some work on my previous videos, but I wanted to capture a quick one here to uh, go over a brand new effect that's just been added to the game that is pretty cool. Um, it's an effect called Beam, and it's uh, it, it just rolled out in a recent update. It's something that I've been watching for and, and been pretty excited about, and uh, there's already some really cool stuff being uh being created with this particular effect so I wanted to kind of quickly go over it and uh, give you guys an overview of what it is and how to use it uh, so you can start creating some cool stuff of your own and then we'll get back to our series here as quickly as possible uh, but just to just to kind of walk through this real quick um, the way that this one works uh, you you use it a lot like the trail and if uh, if you followed the previous videos you know that the trail um, has to be connected uh, between two attachments and beam is the same thing but it's got a lot of really cool additions to it and uh, I'm gonna show you some of those right now so I'm just dropping apart and I'm gonna grab my move tool here I'm gonna duplicate this and drag it up here just so that we have some space in between them I'm gonna anchor both of these now I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna create an attachment I'm going to put an attachment on each of the parts, and you know what, let's actually put it on this side over here, just to be a little bit different, okay? So we have an attachment on each of these parts now. I'm going to come up here and add the beam now. Let's actually put that on the part. Um, now, just like on the trail, you'll notice that there's an attachment 0 and attachment 1. And these are the attachment points for the start and end point of that beam. So what I'm going to do is click in here. And I'm going to select the first attachment, and then I'm going to click here and select the second one. And you'll see that we get this line going in between. Nothing really spectacular happening yet, but it does get really, really, really cool. So with the beam still attached, now there's a few new properties here uh, that are unique to beam, and that's curve size and these segments and widths properties here. I'm going to set curve size 0 to 10. And you'll see it instantly creates this curve. And this curve is coming off of the attachment 0. So curve size 0 and attachment 0 go together. Curve size 1 and attachment 1 also go together. So now if I want to apply a curve here, I'm going to set this one to negative 10. So we're going to curve it the other way. So now we get this s-like shape here and you know as we change these you know I can crank this one way up here 35 and you'll see we get this bow and I can go negative with it and it goes the other way so you're just controlling two different curves and those curves will be maintained as the parts move around And uh, let's go back to the beam here. Segments, if you notice here, the line's pretty choppy. Okay, What this is, is we have, in the, the space occupied by this beam, we have 10 segments that create that beam and its curvature. The fewer segments we have, the blockier it looks. Now the more segments we have, let's go 100 the smoother it looks. So this just gives you a way to control how fluid you want this to look. And then the widths operate the same way as the curve. They're attached to each of the attachments here. So if I take this top, uh, this top width here and I set this to 2, so we're going to double the width of that. And then let's take the bottom one and set it to 0. So you can see we get a tapered effect on the beam. So it starts out wide and it thins out to nothing. So that's how you use these. You can do some pretty neat stuff with this. I'm going to actually rotate the attachment here because you'll notice that it's vertical. If you rotate the attachment, the beam rotates with it. And you can 
you can make some pretty neat little twisting effects by you know playing around with the rotation. So I'm going to rotate this the opposite way, Let's go like this here. So now, in addition to its regular curve, it's actually twisting on the way down as well. And you can change the appearance of this as well. Now, just like uh, you know, anything else, you can set the color. It has the same light emission property as a particle emitter. And it has the same texture settings as a trail. And if you remember from there, you can you can do a lot with uh, you know how the uh, how the uh, texture moves and stuff. I'll show you that in just a second. But I wanted to cover something that is pretty neat with some of these properties that I have not yet covered because uh, they were a little bit advanced for where we were in the stage of the series that we were at. So with color here, right now we have a single color. And let's say you wanted to create something that was a range of colors, right? So maybe you wanted to start with red and end with blue, or you wanted to do a bunch of colors in between. That's actually possible uh, and can be done without scripting. And to do that, you do what's called a color sequence. Uh, the Roblox Studio gives you an easy way to do that. So with the beam attached, if I click on the color field here, you'll notice there's three dots. If I click on that, I get this new type of window. And what this is, is it's essentially, you could almost think of it as uh, if you've ever worked with like Flash or After Effects or anything like that, you have like a timeline. Or uh, even in the uh, animation editor within Roblox Studio, if you've used that as well. So you have a timeline. So you have your start point and your end point. And you have all this space in between that you can manipulate. So if I come over here, I'm going to hit zero just to make sure that I'm at the beginning. And you can tell here, zero. Let's say I want blue. Now you'll notice only the start color has changed. The end color is still green, and we get this gradient effect going down it. So it starts blue and it fades into green. If we click on this triangle over here, we can change this, let's say red, and you'll see it instantly updates our color. So we get these cool fades in between. Now what if I wanted to add more color? Let's say I wanted to make this a rainbow. Well, I know with a rainbow we have red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple. So I'm going to start from the beginning. Let's set this to red. And I know we're going to end up purple, so let's go ahead and set that. Now to get the areas in between, you see when I bring my mouse up here, I get this dotted line. This is going to allow us to add a keyframe to our timeline. And to do that, all you have to do is click, and you'll see that it's added. And you can adjust the time manually here by just coming in. So I'm going to say 0.2. And I'm going to set this to our next color, which is orange. And now we have a three color fade. So we're starting red, going orange, and ending up purple. And you'll notice because of where this is positioned, it's a lot closer to red than it is to purple. So the transition between these two colors is much more dramatic than the transition between these two colors. This is much more gradual because there's more space in between for that change to occur. We can continue adding more. Let's come over here. I'm going to keep these numbers nice and even, so we're going to say 0.4. So we have red, orange, the next color is yellow. Let's make this brighter. And then the same for our remaining colors, so we're going to go 0.6 here. And this one will be green. And finally, blue. So there we have it. So we have our full rainbow spectrum here. So if I close this and we take a look at our beam, you'll see that we have this nice 
color fade covering all of the colors of the rainbow. So pretty cool effect here. There's more that we can do with it. So we have this transparency as well. Right now it's set to 0.5. If we want to be able to see this, you know, completely disappear, which I'm not quite sure why you would want to in a case like this, because it is an effect, you're able to set the transparency to one and then back down to zero to make it fully visible. And again, any value in between. But let's say I wanted to fade the, the transparency as well you can do the same thing as you did with the color sequence in the same way. So we have a three dots here and so we get a different kind of timeline effect and you'll notice when I bring my mouse up I get these weird points in between and what this allows us to do, so we have our start point here we have our end point here. Let's say I want to be completely invisible at the end you'll see it immediately updates so that our purple has started to disappear and at the end it's completely gone. So now we're fading the transparency from fully opaque to fully transparent as well as changing the color in a gradient. You can take this even further let's say we want to do something a little bit dramatic so we can say you know, right about here I want it to be invisible and then I want it to fade back in over here and then maybe I want a 50% transparency here and we'll continue the 50% here and then go invisible again and you'll see what we have here now is we have this invisible region here and then this fully opaque region going back to transparent again so that's how you use these properties here. Now these can be applied to certain other effects too. Uh, for example, the particle emitter. Uh, let's create a new part here. I'm going to throw a particle emitter on here. And we're going to do our color sequencer again. So we're going to start pink, pinkish purple, and we're going to go to a light blue, and sure, we'll go white at the end. And you'll see that we get the same color variance. So you can reapply the same technique to certain other effects. So whenever you see a color value or a transparency value, look for this box here. And you may be surprised to find that you can, you can use these properties here. I'm going to get rid of this and show you guys a little bit of additional things you can do with this. First of all, I'm going to hide the parts that they're connected to because we really don't need to see them. We're focused on the effect itself. So what we're left with, you can see our attachments and obviously the beam itself. Now, as mentioned, that, that beam continues to respect your curves regardless of the angle of our attachments here. So you can play around with that and later on if you want to introduce some scripting and make these spin you can create some pretty neat things with it and things like that. But uh, another thing that you can do is you can add a texture to it as well. So if I were to come in here and uh, actually let's first of all let's get rid of our color sequence. Let's go back to white and let's get rid of our transparency as well so you can really see this and I've got a decal that I found in the uh, the public models for a lightning effect and you'll see that when I apply that texture ID I get this flow of lightning from one point to another pretty cool so I've seen people use this for, uh, there, there were a couple of demos for like uh, powers coming off of the character's hands where they're, you know, connecting to uh, another character, another part, and, you know, it might be damaging, it might be healing, things like that. 
um, you know we can we can come in and tweak this produce some different effects on that you know this might be a, a healing or you know some lightning effect or whatever we want you know an energy flow so there are some cool things you can do with it and you can manipulate this the same way as the trail so really neat stuff um, you know some ideas that that immediately come to mind would be guns uh, you know attaching them to the barrel of the gun and then having a, a script where um, you know when you click on on something uh, it will attach the attachment to that that object and connect the beam to it um, you could do um, Tesla coil you get near it and maybe it, it shoots a stream of electricity um, you could have a broken wire laying on the ground as part of the scenery and have electricity kind of flowing from one part to the next there's a lot of neat things that you can do uh, I saw a demo where somebody had created a waterfall coming off of a floating island um, or a cliffside rather not a floating island um, using a water texture and just allowing it to animate down to uh, to the lake below um, so really this has opened up a lot of really cool possibilities and I'm really excited to see what people start doing with this but I wanted to get this video out, let you guys start playing with it, get familiar with it. I would love to see some of the cool stuff you do. So definitely, if you create anything neat that you feel like sharing, please pass it along. Uh, for, for those of you who have found me on Reddit, you can message me there. Anybody else, if you want to provide a link in and in a comment on this video, I would love to see your creations. So uh, thanks so much for watching, guys. I hope you've learned a lot. Um, and... I hope you're coming up with some really neat ideas for this cool effect. I'm looking forward to see uh, what new things Roblox has in store for us. I know there's talk about Anthro and things like that coming out. So as these features release, I will try to be on top of them with my videos and get that information to you as quickly as possible. Until next time, take care, guys, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.